Hello my friends and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about a video on the sequel to a game that was, well, a little controversial when I talked about it on my channel. This game is the demo for Operators, which is not released yet, and the game it's a sequel to is Entry Point. Now Entry Point is a Payday 2 clone, yes I'm still calling it that fight me that was released on roblox a long time ago i made a video on it quite a ways back and i got a lot of shit for it so much so that it was one of those videos where i ended up making a follow-up video talking about the things that people had told me in the video now the thing is that i just want to sort of go back in time i re-watched that video as well as the follow-up video and um i still sort of don't get it I guess the followers of that game are very, very cultish because when I rewatched the video, I actually came away with a different takeaway than I did when I originally got all the feedback and then ended up making a follow-up video. Because the original entry point video, all of the criticisms that I have in that video pretty much entirely hold up. Not only that, but most of the stuff that people ended up getting upset with me about were stuff that I didn't even really talk about in the video. But whatever. The point is that this game is the sequel to Entry Point. So the hope is that they've improved upon things since the previous entry, and this one is going to be significantly better. And of course, the question is then begged, is that the case? Well, let's talk about it. The first thing that I want to do is run through the problems that I had with Entry Point and talk about whether or not they were addressed at all in the sequel. And then we'll get into things that are specific to this game and don't really have anything to do with Entry Point. The first little section of the video here I'm going to be dedicating to things that I can't confirm whether or not they're going to be better or worse, but just bring them up for the sake of well, letting you guys know. The first has to do with paying for bringing equipment with you. In Entry Point, in order to bring stuff with you in your backpack, you needed to pay for all of the stuff you were bringing, and the higher difficulty that you picked, the more it cost in order to bring things. I don't know why this system was in place, and it just sort of discouraged you from being prepared for the job, and I kinda get that, it's harder so you have less equipment, but I don't know, it just rubbed me the wrong way, and I was never a fan of it. In the Operator's demo, we don't have access to the ability to equip our characters with different items before we go in, and are instead given a set loadout. And because of that, I can't talk about whether or not paying for bringing equipment and difficulties is going to return. I just hope that it doesn't, because it feels like a pointless mechanic that discourages you from playing on higher difficulties, because if you want to play on those higher difficulties, and most importantly, if you want to play loud on those higher difficulties, which requires you to bring in generally more equipment, it's gonna just not be profitable at all. And the second issue that I can't necessarily talk about is the skill trees. These had a ton of pointless stat padding bonuses that would make you have to go through a boatload of different stats that don't really matter in order to get to the things that you actually wanted. And in my entry point video, I made it very clear that I thought that Payday 2's system of the skill tree where the bonuses you picked actually made a difference was significantly better than you get 5% more ammo here, 2% more damage there, all to get to a point where you can unlock an actual gadget or something you can use. It just felt like it was padding the game length and I never even got close to any of these good unlocks after playing the game all the way through, which doesn't feel great. Now we get to move on to the actual things in the game that I can talk about whether or not they improve. The first issue from Entry Point, and probably the most important one, was the what I would refer to as Immortal Walking Tank problem. Basically, in Entry Point, your health does not regen, but if you threw on a boatload of armor, you could effectively stand out in the open and get riddled with bullets over and over and over again, and it would mean pretty much nothing. You could also stack yourself out with medkits, meaning that even if you did take a decent amount of damage, you could just heal it all back. So what this led to was fighting against hordes and hordes and hordes of enemies, and you could be standing out in the open getting blasted, and it wouldn't matter. You could just heal yourself with the medkits, barely take any damage, bada boom, bada bam. Now, it's clear that the developer of the game figured out that this is kind of stupid, and because of that, they've made a lot of improvements here. I think the most important here is the seemingly removal of medkits, or at the very least making them less just spammable, with the introduction of regenerating health instead. But this regenerating health works off of a cap system. 
Basically, the way the health bar works in Operators is if you get shot, your health goes down. There's a certain amount of threshold of HP that can be regenerated just to the regenerating health system after not taking damage for a while. But if you take too much damage, then your health goes below the threshold that you can regenerate and you lose some of your max health. Not only that, but unlike the first game, if enemies get relatively close to you and are just blasting the shit out of you, you actually lose health. Now granted, some of this might be due to the fact that there's currently no armor system in the game, and in the first game I just decked myself out with armor and basically became invincible, so it might still be a problem, but it doesn't look to be. I think the health regeneration on top of the actual ability to take damage is a great addition to the game and should make the loud missions significantly more interesting rather than just standing out in the open and shooting everything. It means finding cover and waiting for your health to regenerate is a real thing rather than just, well, walking towards the enemy mindlessly. Speaking of loud heist problems, we also get to talk about the ammo capacity issue from the first game. In entry point, for some ungodly reason, the developer decided that they were not going to put in any ammo box gadget in the whole game. So if you brought a gun with you that you wanted to use and then ran out of ammo, well, you were pretty much out of luck unless one of the enemies was also running a similar weapon to yours, and if they were, you could walk over it and pick up the type of ammo. Now, thankfully, they've learned from their mistakes here. In the combat demo mission, one of the first things that you see is an ammo box. You can pick it up, and you can use it at any time to refill your ammo. Thank God. There also seems to be potential improvements in terms of picking up ammo off of dead enemies as well. When you kill an enemy, they'll drop a little box of ammo just like they would in Payday 2, and if you walk over it, you can pick up ammo for your gun. The only problem is that this ammo is still based on the current ammo that the enemy was using. And listen guys, I get it. You want to be realistic. If you kill a shotgun guy and you go over and pick up their gun, you shouldn't get ammo for an SMG, but yes, you should. There's just no reason to make it so if you go over an ammo pack and it's not the quote unquote correct ammo after killing an enemy, then you can't get it. That sucks, it's annoying, and it just doesn't have any reason to exist. If you take out an enemy, they should drop ammo, period. Global ammo. Payday 2 solved this years and years and years ago. You can too, I promise. And the last thing that I talked about in my entry point video, or at the very least the last big thing that I talked about that we can talk about here is talking about opening doors. Yeah, I know, this is probably gonna sound like a weird one for those of you who haven't watched that video. But an entry point, opening doors fucking sucks. Basically, when you came to a door and entry point, if you were doing stealth, you had to lock pick it, which took forever and you needed a specific class to do. You could blow it up with C4. If it was a wooden door, you could shoot the hinge. Or if you didn't have any of that ability, you could drill the door, which again took forever. One of my complaints in that game was the fact that if you wanted to drill a door, you couldn't just place the drill and wait for it to happen. No, you had to go over and hold the key and wait for the damn thing to fill up. And if this was in combat, you'd be getting shot while you were trying to do it. It was just asinine. Now thankfully, it appears at the very least that the door problem has been lessened a lot in this game. Especially when it comes to the stealth side of things. Not only does it seem like you'll be able to lockpick doors without having to pick a specific skill tree to do it, so now if you're running a class that isn't specifically designed to lockpick doors, you can still get through them without totally screwing yourself over. But also, a lot of the doors that you're required to get through, you can get through by getting a guard's keycard and then just swiping the keycard on the locked door in order to get through. As I'm sure it's not surprising to hear, it's a lot faster to just grab a keycard from a guard, swipe it, and open the door, rather than just sitting there for like 8 hours unlocking the door. Now granted, it does take away a little bit of the choice from the situation, as it seems like these keycard locked doors can't be picked in any way, which just feels kind of weird, especially when they're required for mission objectives. But regardless, it is what it is. I think it's improved here, and I'll take what I can get. Now, those were all of the problems that I had about entry point that were discussed here, but this game has a host of new issues as well as new improvements that I want to talk about before I wrap up today's video. First, talking about the improvements, and holy god damn is this game immediately better with a third person camera. Seriously, I had no idea how much worse the game was just by forcing first person, and the introduction of a third person camera makes stealthing especially way more intuitive. 
being able to look around corners and such is extremely important, especially when a camera could be hidden right around the door that would detect you almost immediately. If this was an entry point, I wouldn't have that option. If I rounded the corner, I'd get seen by the camera, and that's it. And this is one of those things that just made me realize why stealth in not only entry point, but also payday 2 is so annoying. I think stealth games are basically designed to be in third person, so that way you get that extra level of awareness. And I had never really considered this until, well, now. I always found it weird that I was generally pretty good at stealth games, and yet when I went to go play Payday 2, Entry Point, those types of games, I was always astronomically ass at stealth. And now I'm realizing that it's probably because of that first person camera. Maybe not though, as I've played through the Dishonored games plenty of times, but still. The introduction of third person is significantly better than the forced first person, and it's greatly appreciated in not only stealth, but also general combat as well. Now there was one minor nitpick that had to do with the game, which is that if you go to knock out a guard and you're in first person, it kicks you out to third person in order to knock them out, which is just kind of weird. I don't know why it does that, and I feel like you guys had an animation in the first game to knock out guards with a melee attack, so I don't know why it doesn't still do that in this game, but eh, whatever. It doesn't really matter. Operators also introduces a new hacking system in the game, which I'll be totally honest, I don't completely understand. You can use it to get access to different systems as well as shut off certain things like cameras and electronic doors, so that's pretty cool, and I think it will be a lot more fleshed out when the game is actually released. It does let us segue into one of the best things about the game, which is the tutorial for the game, but not only that, the help section of the game. Now I'll be perfectly honest, there might have been something this in-depth in the first game, I just don't remember. So if it is, you can correct me in the comments. But in this game, there are several tutorials that teach you very handily exactly how the game is supposed to function in, in my opinion, a much better way than in the first game. I do think there was one rather important thing missing from the tutorial though, and that's the introduction of being able to press Q and E while in third person to switch which side you're aiming on, as if you don't play third person shooters, you might not assume this, and if you don't, you're probably going to have a hard time playing through trying to switch your camera angles and not knowing how. Now as for that help tab, holy Jesus, that's a lot of text, but hey! I'll appreciate that lots of text, because if you don't understand something, you can always go to the help tab, and there's probably something in there that's going to be very in-depth on helping you out. This is the way to do tutorials and help systems in-game. It's completely optional, it doesn't waste any of the player's time, but if you are curious about a mechanic or don't totally understand it, or maybe you're coming back after a long break, you can read up on it here, and it's very in-depth. Talking about all that though, we do need to move on to the few negatives that I have to say about the game. And I think the most brutal one is probably just the outward combat in the game. And this is weird because I actually think that this is also an improvement point, but it does have some of the same relics of the past game being intact here and that's a shame. So on the positive note, the enemies don't just walk mindlessly towards you anymore. Well. Sometimes. That's the problem. Most of the time, enemies will use cover consistently in order to just not stand out in the open and get shot, as well as using grenades to flush you out. This adds so much more depth to the combat than in the first game. In the first game, the enemies would just mindlessly charge you and it would basically just be a duel of health bars and a bunch of hallways. But in this game, you're going from cover to cover fighting against the enemies who are doing the same, except for the fact that if you try to stay still for too long, they'll start throwing grenades at you, forcing you to relocate and go to different places. This is great and makes it so much more interesting in combat. The only problem is when the enemies completely ignore all those directives and decide to just charge at you anyway and then stand directly in front of you just blasting you. The reason it feels so off is because you go from AI that's way better back to the original just sort of garbage AI. And this garbage AI seemingly has no regard for their life whatsoever. Stand in the middle of the room, shoot the enemy. Like, what is going on here? I assume further down the line there will be more different mechanics that will be able to flush you out of cover, more explosive weapons, things you have to watch out for, but I just hope when they get there they do a better job of sort of curbing this death wish charge straight at you mentality that sometimes the AI will have. I think it'd be better if they pinned you into a room and started throwing grenades rather than pinning you into a room and then just charging in there themselves with reckless abandon. And finally on negative points, I gotta talk about the stealth again. 
because despite the fact that it was largely improved from the last game, well, it was still my biggest point of contention and still the point that I failed the most hands down. And the problem is that the stealth still feels a lot like a bit of a trial and error game. See, the thing is, while you're trying to learn the enemy layouts and the layout of the level, you're just sort of getting caught over and over and over again and having to reset back to the beginning. Walked through a door and didn't see the camera, that's a reset. Walked into a room and the guard was on the left side instead of the right and you couldn't see him because the camera isn't able to go that far, reset. Decided to disable something on the network, someone went down there, found a body, reset. It's all strange and weird because the AI isn't even remotely dynamic or unpredictable. They always do the same things no matter what, which generally in stealth games can be a blessing or a curse, and in here I feel like it's a curse. Because the margin for error is so low, where you just get caught and that's a wrap pretty much immediately, the ARs are made extremely predictable as a compensation. But what that ends up leading to is failing the mission four or five times until you figure out exactly the most optimal way to do it, and then blowing through the whole thing in like three minutes. I just think that there really needs to be a middle ground between blowing through the mission in three minutes and if you get caught you have an instant failure. I love the fact that the game doesn't use a pager mechanic or anything nonsense from Payday, so if I do decide to knock out guards and then hide their bodies accordingly, I'm not going to constantly get screwed over if I take out too many guards. I just think that's an annoying mechanic and I'm glad they didn't use it here. But I also think that the guards really need to have more diverse routes that they take and more randomness, so that way if I knock out a guard in the middle of the open, I don't know that there's no way Way that body is going to get found because the guard inside is never going to patrol outside. And I know this is going to take a lot of work, but at the end of the day, I just think that the AI needs some work both on the stealth front and the combat front. And the final note on stealth is something that was probably a problem in entry point as well, and I just didn't notice. And the only reason I noticed was because of just how well executed it was in Metal Gear Solid 5. Very recently, I was going through Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes in order to try to 100% the game on Steam. And because I had played that so recently, it made me realize just how important the sound design is to these stealth games, and how it being completely absent here really hurts the game. In MGS5, the cameras make sounds as they go back and forth, so you can ID where they are. The guards talk to each other, sneeze, make noise, walk around with footsteps. You know, they generally exist in the world as people. But in here, they don't do that. Nobody seemingly makes any noise. In fact, the levels of operators are eerily silent. I think any introduction of some amount of sound design to the game would help the game tenfold when it comes to stealth, as right now, it's basically a crapshoot. If someone's right around the corner, or a camera's right around the corner, just because I can't see it, I should still be able to hear it and know it's there, so I don't walk through the door and just immediately get caught with no indication that there was anything there to catch me. And really, that's the most that I have to say about the game for the most part. The one thing that I will say at the very end of the video is that while I was reading up on the game to make sure that I had a better idea of the timeline, I went on to the wiki. I did read that when the game is supposed to come out, it's presumably going to be paid access for 400 Robux. And I can say that in its current state, I would be shocked if they managed to make it worth paid access and 400 Robux. And if that does happen, um... Uh-oh. Next video, whenever this comes out, is, uh, it ain't gonna be good. Paid access is a very interesting beast on the platform, and you need to make damn sure that your game is good enough to be there. And considering the fact that this game at the end of the day is very similar to Entry Point, the previous game which is free, well, if you're releasing paid access for only a slight upgrade, yeah, we're gonna have a problem. Anyways, that's all for today's video. Hopefully the entry point cult fanbase doesn't crawl out of the woodworks for this one, but I'm sure they will. If you're one of those people, please actually take a listen to the things that I have to say rather than just getting unnecessarily upset that I don't like your favorite game. Because that's not even necessarily true. I think there's a lot of improvements here and I think I can like this game. Because the further we go, the less we get away from Payday 2, and the more we get into a more original game, and that's good. Anyways, that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day night wherever you are, and see you guys next time. Oh, yeah.